Hi, my name is Vincent Simone. I'm the tennis doctor. I've hit a one-handed backhand for over 15 years, and today I'm going to be debunking one of the most common myths that we should be rolling our wrist on the one-handed backhand. And this may be the one thing that has been preventing you from getting some serious leverage over your one-handed backhand all of these years. The proof of what I'm about to show you will be your immediate results as soon as you go and implement it on the court. And then, well, you'll have all the proof that you need. So let's begin. The main philosophy of old school textbook tennis teaching is low to high. It makes sense, you know, in theory, that coming from low to high and brushing over the ball is how we create topspin. But this creates many issues on the one-handed backhand for a few reasons. When you come and brush over the ball by flicking your wrist, you have no power. You end up skimming the ball and fluffing it. And this is the main reason that your one-handed backhand has no sound. It's counterintuitive, but we actually don't wanna even swing from this part of our arm during the shot. We want it to be completely stable. The only way to achieve this is to make sure that at contact point, your racket head does not fall below your hand. The wrist position, which is established from the beginning of the swing, remains. It's called the L for leverage position. Every good pro player with a one-handed backhand gets this position early, usually right off the bat, and they maintain it all the way to the follow through. A lot of people are essentially fanning over the ball and they're also not staying sideways, which is a topic for another video. But by going like that, they think that they're creating lots of spin, but they're actually shooting themselves in the foot before starting a marathon. So when the racket is back here, the reason that people are actually dropping the racket head below the hand is because they think, you know, I gotta get under the ball. Now, this is true. You do have to get slightly under the ball if you wanna hit, you know, an arced top spin ball, but Instead of dropping the racket head to get down there, you have to be a lot more athletic on the one-handed backhand. And we want our body to move like an elevator to get us down there. So while we get down to the height of the ball, we need to keep the racket, what I call above the table, okay? You can get away with it on the two-hander. You can drop the wrist but not on the one-handed backhand. Another thing that goes with keeping the wrist up is having straight arms at contact point, okay? This is the position that every pro player gets at contact point on the one-handed backhand. The arm is never bent. And right now, it looks like my wrist isn't up, but it is. That's only because my racket is down here. If I'm to straighten up my arm and not move my wrist at all, you will see the letter L position. And a lot of players are also playing with wristbands, so it's hard for people to see. But, you know, they think that, oh, the wrist must be down, it must be loose and relaxed. It's up, it's firm, it's tight. Okay, I'm not squeezing the grip, but I am flexing my wrist upright the whole time. And you will notice that this angle does not even release. We can still see the letter L for leverage all the way up here when we finish tall like a Statue of Liberty, spread the wings behind us. And then the recovery phase starts and then we relax and not until the ball has 
left our strings, okay, way, way after. If you like what you learned here, I recommend taking the next step and going into my online course because it takes these concepts and builds on them and shows you a complete system for enjoying tennis for the rest of your life. You can get started by clicking the link down in the description and you can sign up on my website.